Welcome to your iconic image. If you want to take control of your image and be a power player in your space, then this is the show for you. Here we will arm you with tools and information to help you grow your brand on purpose. I'm your host, Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Now let's dive into today's episode. Today, I have the pleasure of sharing the space with my dear friend and colleague. Claire Harvey began as an intern at the Christian Science Monitor, photographing President Clinton and other White House events. She brings together her fascination with entrepreneurial endeavors and her love of, passion for, and talent in photography to create meaningful work for her entrepreneurial clients. This unique blend of business knowledge and artistry makes Claire stand out, not just as a photographer, but as a business and brand resource. Welcome, Claire. Thank you, my dear friend. This is so fun. (laughs) I feel like we've talked about doing this for so long and now it's It's, finally happening. It's true. And, you know, I'll give everybody a little bit of background here. Claire and I are both personal brand photographers. We have worked together. We have traded clients off and on when one was a better fit for the other. So we have a, a history and we have been talking for a while about giving everybody more information about personal brand photography. So you can make better choices when it comes to the photographers you select and the images that you're getting, all those types of things. So let's just start off, Claire, by telling people what should they be looking for, in your opinion, when they are looking for a brand photographer? I think the biggest thing that you and I talk about all the time, and one of the reasons we've been really able to give clients back and forth to each other is each photographer has a niche really and a um like their own niche and their own style that works for them and i think a lot of it kind of goes to the photographer's personality in a way and so you really want to be able to click with the photographer themselves and then also fit into their niche so um Like, I mean, just to use you and I as an example, I feel like that's like the best example to use is that you're more towards like the fashion forward, fashion um, driven people and women. And I more like put my hiking boots on and go into the woo woo space. And we joke about it all the time, but it's a really good way of framing the discussion that people have different clientele. And, um, So when you're looking for a photographer, you really need to find someone that has experience kind of in your space or that you're comfortable with, that you're comfortable with their style. Um, And I think that you look at them kind of aspirationally, like you look at them and you feel something from their images and you want to have images like you're seeing, you feel like it's a fit, but, and, and I don't think that like, I don't think it should go like unnoticed, I think it's very important that you click with them personally, because when you're in a photo shoot, you need to feel comfortable. And that's when you're going to have your best images. And I, I do hear over and over again, I'm sure you do too, that someone will have their pictures taken and they don't like the result or they're not comfortable. And it's just so important that you're comfortable with the person. It's a very intimate relationship and you need to be comfortable you're going to like the outcome if you're comfortable. So finding someone that really is in your niche and that you click with is so important. And if that takes, I mean, maybe that takes a few people, right? You could interview a few different people and then. Absolutely. Cause it really it's photography is not a one size fits all. And like you said, there are different people and with different styles that serve different niches. And because we have to really get to know you and your brand and what makes you unique and all those kinds of things. Like you mentioned, Claire, it does become a very intimate relationship and you really need to click with the person that is going to be sharing that space with you. And we want it to be an intimate relationship. We want this to be a partnership that lasts for a long time. We don't see it, especially you and I, um, and, and people should be looking for a brand photographer that want it to be a deep, meaningful relationship that lasts for a long time. You should be looking for that. And you and I really, really value that. And so we really want to get to know our clients and our people. And oftentimes you and I will become good friends with them. Right. (laughs) We really value it. Um, And um, there was something else I was going to say, and now I totally forget about 
um, finding someone. Oh, another, I, I just want to say another space I think that's important to really think about or look at is like corp more corporate business photography. Like I think it's important. Um, like I know for me, I, my style is more artsy and not as like stage or posed or, um, corporate. And so I think if, if, if someone's looking at something from a corporate standpoint, um, that's a certain type of photographer as well. So I just wanted to get that. In right. Because, which is important because the style that you see on someone's website, that's the style you're going to get. Yes. And also while we're on the subject of websites, if you go to somebody's website and they are a personal brand photographer and all you are seeing are headshots or versions of headshots, yes. my suggestion is to move along because that's not what brand photography is. You know, I use the analogy often that, you know, a headshot is like a book title. It gives us an introduction, but that's all that it does. But the reason that we buy the book is always for the story. And that's what personal brand photography is. It's the story that we tell. So make sure when you go onto somebody's website, that is what you're seeing. You're seeing storytelling. Totally agree. And not everybody does that. And not everybody necessarily wants that, right? Like some people may just need that corporate headshot. But if you are in it for telling your story and having deep, meaningful images that are unique and scroll stopping and will make you stand out from the crowd. You need to find someone that is showing that because you can't expect someone to give you something you want if they're not showing it to you <laughs> originally. So um, yeah, it's a good right. point. And that's, that's really a specialized skill that you and I, I know have both developed over time. We, because of our backgrounds, we, it wasn't, a foreign concept to us, but it's something that I think we have honed and gotten better and better with over time. That's, it's so true. And I think with experience, you really understand how to develop the stories more. And um, we work with our clients for hours and, you know, we, we meet with them and have Zoom calls with them and do creative briefs and intake forms. It's not just high show up and here you are. And I, I take your pictures. It's a, it's a lot of preparation to come up with figuring out who they are and where their business is now and where their business is going in order then to create the imagery for now into the future, to take them into the future. And it's, it, it's a really cool process because you're like, you're learning so much about people and business and how they work and their, their vision and their, um, uh, and their quirks too. Genius. What, what? <laughs> and their quirks too. Yes, yes. It's it's so it's such a cool collaborative experience. Yes. Um. And and I, when I got into this, I had already been doing kind of lifestyle storytelling images of families. And that was my style with families. And so when you and I met and we were kind of introduced to this style of photography, which is basically like five years ago now, five yeah. and a half years ago, um, we, we did already have that in us. It was right. just, this was brought to light and you're like, oh, I mean, I just remember a light bulb going off for me and being like, this is what I meant to do. Like it, I get to work with entrepreneurs, which has been my dream. And I love being an entrepreneur. And then I get to bring together the photography aspect of it. And so working with entrepreneurs to really figure out their entrepreneurial journey and story, and then to bring it, the imagery into it, it just, it really is the coolest process. And because, you know, we keep using that word story, let's yeah. dive into that a little bit. Okay. What, how would you describe a story? I'm, I'm going to help you out a little bit. I'm like, I, ah, like, where, like, do I, like, <laughs> where do I go? The, the true definition, what I'm thinking in my head. I don't know. <laughs> go ahead. You go ahead. It is a journey that you are oh, taking people journey on. journey was exactly what I was thinking. Okay. That was exactly <laughs> That's why we work together so well. I know. Um, I know. Always and, the same. You know, if, if you've ever read any of the books like Story Brand by Donald Miller or yeah. any of those types of things. Storytelling is one of the most powerful things there is 
in inviting people on into your brand. Yeah. And so that's, that's what we are trying to do is tell your unique story in a way that it relates yeah. to the people you are trying to reach. Yes. So how do you get to the heart of the stories that you need to tell? What does your process look like? So, um, when someone initially contacts me, I think we kind of have a brief conversation about what they want and what they need. And then I have a very in-depth questionnaire that's standard for all my clients. But what I tell them is that I want a complete brain dump. So I don't want like perfect sentences and answers. I want them just to like spew information in these questions that gives me, it shows me their personality. And then it gives me a ton of information about who they are trying to reach as clients, who they're currently reaching, where they are in their marketing strategy, where they are in the life of their business, um, and gives me like a complete holistic view of them. And then I get to pick out, or I, I am able to pick out, um, really good nuggets of information from that. And from there, I, um, kind of come up with a creative brief and plan based on that. And then we go through that together. And I say, is this, you know, is this what you're thinking? And is this accurate? And I would say a hundred percent of the time it, it, it is what they had been thinking. Um, but I think really the point there is the communication. Um, and I will say some people in our initial conversation aren't sure they don't know. And so, and I'm sure you see, I wonder if you see this too, like going through the questionnaire actually gives them a lot. It really helps inform them. And again, we are not, um, we're not brand professionals. We are not, right. um, doing the website and doing the copy and, uh, logos and everything that a brand professional does, but going through the process of answering these questions in order to figure out which imagery to create, it is very helpful to these entrepreneurs in their brand journey. Yes. Yeah. I know for me, I, I tell people all the time that I am not a brand strategist, so I'm not going to help you with your messaging or, or those kinds of th how to monetize your brand, any of those kinds of things. My job is to communicate your brand. Yes. And just like you, I have a questionnaire that they fill out initially, and then we have a discussion about it. And I usually find, I don't know if you find this, I usually find that the real answer is never really what they wrote. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is why it's important to have the follow-up discussions after, because there could be real aha moments for them when you ask a, a follow-up question of, is this what you meant? Or am I reading this correctly? Or, um, oh, you said X, where do you see X in two years? Or, you know, so those follow-up questions also is really what gets them thinking and then could be like a total aha moment for them. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So now let's say, you know, we go out, we, you and I both are location shooters. Um, I know for me, the, the idea of working in a studio is too confining for me. I, I think it's, it's too restrictive because I would rather find the right spot because that's also part of the story. Yeah. And and, you know, you and I also, that's what our background is. It is shooting in that manner anyway. Um, but now we go out, we, we take their images. What should they be getting from us or any brand photographer as far as deliverables go? It's so interesting because um, right before you asked that, I was thinking about how um, in my process when I am, um, and I'm, I'm getting to the answer of your question in a roundabout sure. way. Um, <laughs> So I, I, in the creative brief, I will put kind of sample images that fit with the story and what we're, what we want to do and, and the location and so forth. And I will look on Pinterest and I'll Google image and, you know, looking for, and a lot of times, most times I have to say to people, well, you know, don't take these, take these for surface value because there's really not anything out there that I can find. That's what we're creating for you. And I'm not just saying that it's true. Like when I go searching for blank, I'm like, is this all that exists? So like, 
what you should be getting from us though, is something that's completely unique and to you and your story. So yes. that's first and foremost, it should and be. Let me, let me just throw one thing in with that is going back to somebody's website. If you go on there and the quote unquote storytelling that you are seeing seems to be the same. It's people working on a mm. computer. It's people yeah. having coffee. It's people talking on the phone. Yeah. In my personal opinion, that does, I would rather see images of you doing those things than you use stock images. However, all, everybody does those things. So that is not saying anything unique about you. Yeah. So that, that's, and that's actually, that, and that's one of those things that when, when you really work with someone um, prior to the shoot to prepare, that's where you pull that stuff out. Cause yeah, it may be like, you know, as a photographer with your camera, with your computer, this and that, you're an entrepreneur, but then there's so much else behind it. Like you may be an online entrepreneur, but who are you? Like, who are you and what is behind that? And who is your family and how do they play into things? And what are your interests and what got you here? And where are you going? It's not just the computer. It's not just the internet. Um, exactly. So that's a really good point. And I think also there's something else that you and I talk about all the time and that it runs throughout my, um, whatever kind of images I'm creating. And that's the motion. And that goes along with storytelling because when you're telling a story, what really brings someone in is the emotion and the feeling that they get from looking at the image. So you need to have images that are not stagnant and not lifeless. You need to have images that when someone sees it, they're like, oh, they get you, they get your story, they get your brand. And it's, while it's unique to you, it is also full of authentic emotion that is your, your emotion, your brand and your um, values that's right. communicating all of that. So that is key to me, whether I'm taking pictures of a newborn in their new home with their new family that just brought them home or an entrepreneur on site, like we've talked about, it's, it's the movement, it's the emotion that does make it unique to them, but that also just, that is what part of what makes it um, something that resonates with your viewer. Right, no, I agree with you. And, you know, here's the thing. People meet us online before they ever meet us in person. And oftentimes they never meet us in person. Mm -hmm. So you, so people need to look at these images as relationship building. Mm -hmm. You are, you are trying to bridge that gap and cross that bridge between you and the person that you want to them to know you. Mm -hmm. And so like, like you were just saying, Claire, the more you can show of yourself, the more emotion you can put into these, or we can pull out of you for these, yeah. um, <laughs> the better yeah. off you are. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of people have said to, well, I'm just not good in front of a camera or things like that. And the other thing that you need to realize is that that's not your job. That's our job. Yep. That's why you go to a professional, just like if I walked into a, a hair salon and, you know, I, I bring my hair. It is what it is, it but, so I, good. <laughs> but I expect the professional to be able to do something with it that, that I like. And That's it's a really good point. And so it's the same thing with photography. If you haven't had images that you like, or, you know, you, you feel like you're not photogenic, all those kinds of things, it very well may be that you're just not working with the right person for you. And I'm not necessarily saying that it's you or me, but it's just not the right person for whoever that is. Um, I, I totally agree. And I will say what I usually tell people when they say that is, look, <laughs> I mean, the, it's basically a conversation. Um, when I am with someone, I, I'm incredibly like open and informal. And again, that's not for everyone, right? That, right. That's, that's who I am. And you kind of get that and you're going to work with me if you like that, if you click with that. But that is part of, I think, how you get people to be open because you're really just having a conversation with them and then intermittently taking pictures. But like it, it, it's, it shouldn't be an uncomfortable process and you right. should 
you should be able to trust the person you hired. You're exactly right. Exactly. So now let's say somebody comes to one of us, who's an ideal client for you? Because we do have overlap yes, in, in a lot yeah, of things, yeah. but there are, there are also distinctions. And for example, Claire mentioned earlier that if you're going to go put on some boots and go hiking up in the woods and with all the snakes and the critters, I'm probably not the girl for you. I have clients. Well, I have a client that <laughs> that's very much his world. Yeah. However, in general, that's not really my world. But I know you are Googling high heeled hiking boots for that. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm baffled. I have to currently buy a pair of hiking boots and I'm just, I'm baffled by the whole thing because I, I found myself instead buying a pair of high heeled boots that were very much not hiking because that is my world. <laughs> so if you have like what I, I jokingly refer to as the lashes and Louboutins factor, that's, that's my girl. Yeah. That's my client. Um, but if you are kind of earth mothery person, you know, getting in touch with your, your, your spirituality, Claire's your girl. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's so interesting. I know so many of our mentors have said, niche down, it's down, that's so much better. And I resisted for so long saying what I felt called to have be my niche. And now I just, I, I do. And I, I don't, um, I, I just, I feel totally call into the mompreneur, um, or the female entrepreneur. Um, and I, I'm not apologizing for that because I realize that everybody really is called to a certain type of um, clientele. And I think that one of the reasons I I'm called to women entrepreneurs is because that's what I am. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I feel like I'm called to mompreneurs is because I totally get them. And, right. um, I think when you understand where someone's coming from, it also really helps develop their stories and, and tell their stories. So, um, right. and I, I, I do love an adventure and, you know, I've, I've hiked for a lot of clients and, um, I truly believe that if you are in a space that is soul fulfilling for you and inspiring for you, that you're going to look your best. So I really try to get clients where they feel their best. And, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, that is good. But I mean, my, my ideal client really is the female entrepreneur and I do love the woo. -woo so it, <laughs> it could be, it could be a spiritual practice. It could be, um, I've had clients that are like new, uh, toy companies, um, stores, um, really run the gamut. Um, but I, um, I, I love taking adventures with my clients as well. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of that. I think it really adds to the experience. Yeah. And for me, I'm really, there's a part of me that's really just a frustrated fashion photographer. So <laughs> I want, I want Harper's Bazaar and Vanity Fair and those kinds of images. Um, I want them to still tell a story, but I want them to look like you ripped them out of a magazine. And, and, they do. and I, you know, I love all of Annie Leibovitz's stuff and things like that. And I think with, like I said, it's not that, um, I just lost my complete train of thought. Yeah, lost it. Con. Um, anyway. <laughs> but I, I got caught up in the fashion aspect of it for a minute there. I know um, I, I was seeing exactly what you were saying. I was like, I know what you're saying. I can see <laughs> it. But you know, like like we were getting at earlier, we do have overlap. My clients are generally not new to the the entrepreneurial space. The, uh, startups aren't really the space that I thrive in. It's a space that you thrive in. But yeah. for me, it's usually people that have some footing behind them, but are looking to make the next leap. Mm -hmm. um, so they're on the, they've, they've already climbed the mountain a bit and they're, they're ready to be tipped over the other side where mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of like, you know, okay, we're at the base of the mountain. Let's go. I, I got you. 
Yeah, literally. That's so interesting. Hiking. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it's interesting you say that because I think you're kind of right. And I don't know how that evolved. I think it just kind of has. And I think that um, one of the things that we are always trying to communicate is the importance of imagery, no matter what stage you are right. in evolution. And um, one of the things I constantly write in notes or um, on documents is like, and, and I, I don't know if I ever publish it because I don't ever want to sound negative and in a way it kind of sounds negative, but like, how are you going to start a business this day and age without professional images? Like you have to have a website, you have to have a social media presence. So like, do you want to be taken seriously right off the bat? Or do you want and look like you are a professional company that is investing in yourself right off the bat? Yes, because you have one chance. And let, and let me let me give that a little twist, Claire. Okay. If you are unwilling to invest in yourself, why should anyone invest with you? Yep. It's so true. And sight is one of the most powerful things advertising has built so much around what we see. So do not discount or neglect the way you are being seen and portrayed. You deserve it. I think so many people think, oh, well, I can't yet. Well, what is more important to spend money on? I think that's a really important thing to look at. If you're like, well, I don't have the money right now, or I can't do this yet. Well, what are you investing in that could be more important than this? You've invested in your business and you're investing, you need to invest in this part of the business and this for yourself, because this is what's going to take you like really launch you or take you to the next level. And like you were saying, how people view you it could be totally subconscious when someone sees an image online, how they are viewing you in a professional manner. Mm -hmm. But if you go and look what you're attracted to or not attracted to, and I don't want to say repelled by, because it's not that severe. It's just like who you would invest in or what product you would invest in. What are they showing you? I think that's a really good exercise um, as you're either investing in professional images or starting your brand or at any level, just on social media, how you're showing up on social media, looking at how, what you're attracted to and what you're not attracted to on social media, because that says a lot about you and your brand. Right. I agree. So with that, Claire, any final thoughts you want to leave everybody with? No, I just want to keep talking to you all day long. I love our conversations. <laughs> okay, well then I'm going to just say this. Okay. If you get nothing else out of this episode, please know that the photography is not a one size fits all. Look for images on somebody's website that are storytelling and also realize that you are worth investing in. So please consider investing in yourself. All right, Claire, with that, I only have four final questions for you. First one is what is the best piece of advice you were ever given? So the best piece of advice I was ever given was um, from a boss when I was uh, working in finance in the corporate world. And she said, just to keep doing my job because then no one else, no one can ever say you didn't do your job. And that really stuck out to me because it was, and I say it to my kids, I think about it all the time. Like if you just keep doing it, no one can ever say you weren't working or weren't doing it, no matter what the work product is. And it sounds simple, but like, I don't know, it really, really impacted me. Mm. Okay. What's one thing on your bucket list? Um, more travel. And I don't know exactly where that is, but I've had some really good travel this year. And so, oh, I don't have a good answer. I have so many things in my bucket list. It's so bad. It's hard to narrow down. More <laughs> exciting travel that involves hiking. Okay. When the, when the toy companies finally get around to making an action figure of you, what two accessories will it come with? <laughs> a camera, obviously. And, um, 
maybe a child hmm. on my hip. <laughs> Very earth mother. <laughs> and the last one, Claire, how do people find you? Um, so claireharvey.com is my website that leads to other websites. So you can start there. And then Instagram is at Claire Harvey photo. And then LinkedIn is Claire uh, Rosebush Harvey. Love it. So thank you so much for being here. And you know, I love you. I love you. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Please comment, like, or share this episode. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more information on how I can help you create your iconic image, visit marlenasemenza.com.